Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at a pretty hot phone. This is the Nokia Lumia 900 on AT&T. This is AT&T's new flagship phone. It runs Windows Phone 7.5 Mango. It has a 4.3 inch AMOLED display, LTE, and it's just a pretty hot, beautiful looking polycarbonate unibody phone. We're going to look at it now. So this is the Nokia Lumia 900. It's going to be available on AT&T April 8th in black and cyan, and white will be available on April 22nd. Now for what's being billed as a flagship AT&T phone, pretty high-end stuff here, it's only going to be $99 with contract and $449 with that, which isn't bad. And of course, other retailers are discounting even further, like Walmart and Amazon, so you might find it for less. What do you get for your money? You get a 4.3-inch AMOLED display using Nokia's clear black technology, which makes for, well, really deep and rich blacks. It reduces glare and it deepens the colors even further. Now, the video camera can't even do justice to the rich colors that we see here, really saturated and vibrant. But without that kind of cartooniness you see in some Samsung Super AMOLED displays, so more realistic and more natural, just better than life, deep, rich, and beautiful. It has a 1.4 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU, that's second generation, and that's a single core CPU. Windows Phone only supports single core CPUs, and to be honest, it only needs it. This is a very fast and responsive phone. It has 16 gigs of internal storage with about 13.6 gigs available for your use. It has an excellent 8 megapixel rear camera and a front video chat camera that we've tested with Skype beta, works great, and also Tango is included for video chat. And it has the usual Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a GPS. The Wi-Fi is 802.11bgn. Bluetooth is 2.1 plus EDR and the GPS is, well, the GPS, and it works just fine with the included Bing Maps and also with AT&T Navigator. The phone runs Windows 7.5 Mango. Now, there have been tweaked releases since Mango came out a couple of months ago, and this one adds support for LTE, for example. And it's very fast and responsive. As you can see here, we have a little bit of inertia scrolling to make it controllable so it doesn't go too fast, but this phone is, is just very fast. I always thought my HTC HD7S on AT&T was pretty darn quick, but this guy having a faster CPU is just really nice to work with. Let's take a look around the phone first. It has a very unique design. Well, unique, it goes so only so far. That is to say, it looks a lot like the Nokia Lumia 800, which was an overseas phone that we did a review of a couple of months ago, which also looked like the N9. But the look is certainly distinctive to Nokia, and it worked really well with the Lumia 800 and the N9. They brought it back. It's a polycarbonate unibody design. This is solid polycarbonate here, and it's the same color through and through. It doesn't scratch easily, but if you were to scratch it, the same color is underneath, so it should never get to look too ugly. And you've got these neat kind of tapered curving sides here. And then flat on the top and the bottom, which makes it pretty easy to grip and hold, a little easier to pull out of your purse, that kind of thing. And this is the top of the phone. This is where your micro USB port is for charging and for syncing either the Zoom disk desktop or to Windows Phone 7 connector on the Mac. And we've got the micro SIM card tray here. Gone is the funky little two-part door that was on the Lumia 800 and now they've gone for something more straightforward. Here's your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Obviously on this side we've got volume controls. This is your power button and this is your dedicated sh shutter button for the camera. That's a requirement for Windows Phone that there be a dedicated shutter button. On the bottom here we have the large speaker grill. On this side nothing. And on the back just more clean polycarbonate. You can see it does show fingerprint oil somewhat though, the black model. And here's our Carl Zeiss lens right here, an LED flash. Now this is not particularly raised and so far it's not lumpy humpy so it's not going to wobble on your desk too much or pick up scratches necessarily more easily say than some camera phones that have really raised lips for the lens. It's nice. And on the front here we have the usual Windows Phone capacitive buttons. There's your Windows key that brings you back home. This is your back button. If you press and hold this you can switch between running applications. It's called quick switching. And then there's your find button which activates Bing search. You can search the web. You can search the device. You can search pretty much everything with that. Let's compare it to a couple of other phones before we dig inside. Now for a 4.3 inch phone, this is relatively large. It weighs 5.6 ounces, not too heavy, but it feels nice and weighty in the hand. But it's pretty big. Here it is next to the iPhone 4 and you can see it's quite a bit bigger than the iPhone with a 3.5 inch display and that's to be expected. 
given the difference in display size, but the Lumia is also just about as big as the Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket on AT&T with a 4.5 inch display. And here they are side by side there, neck and neck. And also we don't have it here, but the HTC Titan, the original Titan, not the Titan 2 that's coming, is about the same size as well, though it has a 4.7 inch screen, because HTC really did a miracle there, taking a, a potentially huge phone and making it not too big. In terms of thickness, it's 0.45 inches, so not too thick. And here we have it next to the HTC HD7S on the left. You can see the difference in display quality even here. But again, just about the same size. Actually, the HD7S is just a little bit shorter. Now this part is for those of you who are new to Windows Phone 7. Uh, you can go and grab a cup of coffee right now for about two minutes. If you're already a veteran for Windows Phone, you know everything about it. This is called the Metro UI here. We've got live tiles. They're called live tiles. So as you can see, some of them are refreshing. This is my People Hub right here, and it's flipping through all of my contacts. And that's really just for eye candy purposes. The Xbox Live will have my avatar popping out every so often and do things. Again, that, that's just eye candy. Here you have something more informative. That's the Windows Phone Marketplace right here, and it's telling me that I have two updates available. This is a CNN live tile, and it's flipping between top story, so there's a much more useful live tile or more active. When Windows Phone first came out in the fall of 2010, the live tiles were not too lively because there was no multitasking for anything except for the built-in applications, sort of like with the iPhone when it first came out. Now we've got multitasking, we've got a lot more going on here. We've got my ESPN, I haven't, don't have any sports alerts set up or I could see stuff there. Now how do you get to all of your programs? See the little arrow here? You just tap that and this is all of my programs in alphabetical order. So you don't have an application grid like you do on iOS or an Android in the app drawer. It's all alphabetical with little icons here. And once you have enough apps, the little letters show up to separate it and help you to find things. As you can see, there are about 70,000 apps available in the Windows Phone Marketplace right now. This phone takes off. If the platform takes off in general, we'll see a lot more developers working on that, but we've got plenty of apps here. First we've got the AT&T stuff. By the way, anything that's pre-installed on this phone, you can delete it, which is pretty cool. You can just press and hold on it and get rid of it. Say I don't want AT&T radio. Press and hold, I'm going to uninstall it. Gone. So anyway, I've got bandwidth, which is like equivalent of speedtest.net application for Android and iOS. I've got a box files, third-party client, built-in stuff, calendar, calculator, all that stuff. We've got CNN here, got a gadget app, ESPN, Evernote, Frida, an excellent free ebook reader for non-DRM EPUB books, also supports Calibre and other ways of getting books on board. Google Search is here, because of course this doesn't come with Google Search built in. Microsoft would really rather you use their search products. We've got Bing Maps here, the Marketplace, those are built in. Music and videos, the Zoom player. We have Netflix pre-installed. Got News 360 for news, pulses here. Of course, the built in MS Office suite for viewing, editing, and creating MS Office documents. RSS readers, Tango voice calls, guitar tuner application. There's all sorts of stuff that's actually available and pretty easy to get to. Let's take a look at the marketplace so you can see more of the selection. Now, one thing about Nokia is they get to make some custom apps that other manufacturers don't. Microsoft doesn't allow for a lot of customization of the UI or look and feel, and usually they don't like replication of the core applications, but Nokia Oh, there's an exception there. And you get some pretty neat stuff. Some of them are just things they recommend, like CNN, ESPN, some kid stuff. We have Creative Studio, a really neat application. It enhances photos you've already taken or ones that you will take with a camera. You can do those funny distorted face shots. You can do color effects, all sorts of stuff like that. Stitch panoramas together. That's free. You've got Nokia Drive for Nokia's own turn-by-turn -turn driving directions. Just Nokia Maps here for regular maps. And Mass Transit mapping as well. And they have a handy contacts transfer application if you want to try to get your contacts off of another phone rather than syncing to the cloud. And they have a network set of utility. So nice value-added apps from Nokia. And if you take a look at some highlight applications, you can see we've got USA Today, Xbox Companion, because this does have Xbox Live integration. You've got Spotify, you've got Groupon, OpenTable, a variety of YouTube players. This does play HTML5 video, by the way, no Adobe Flash, because Adobe has stopped mobile Flash development for new devices. Amazon application, eBay, Shazam, Flickster, Yelp, IMDb is here, Foursquare, Kindle is here. Sorry, there is no Nook, though. Flickr, Fandango, and a lot of social networking clients that you actually probably don't need because if you take a look at our People Hub, you'll see how both Facebook and Twitter integration is really nice and tight here. 
and I'm in my people hub, which is more than just contacts. I can flick to get to my contacts, but here's what's going on in Twitter and Facebook, and I can post updates there anytime I want pretty easily too, which is nice. And then here's a listing of all my contacts in here on this particular phone, so very easy to use. So that's our quick introduction to Windows Phone for those of you who are unfamiliar with it. And you can see the speed of using the UI here. It's very nice. By the way, again, with Live Tiles, if you don't want it, say we don't want AT&T U-verse, go on. And I can put something in its place. And I can change the default color of the tiles here. A, anything that's blue right now is the Nokia blue theme. But I can change it to a variety of colors, and you can either have a black background or a white background, though black looks pretty stunning on this black phone, especially with the clear black display with really nice inky blacks. For web browsing, we have IE9 Mobile here. Again, it does HTML5 video, not Adobe Flash. They've really done a good job of improving the rendering and the speed on the phone. And we'll visit our own site so you can see what it looks like. And there's our favorites list. And this is over AT&T's LTE network right now. Speeds have been very good on this, by the way. Download speeds, we've seen about 15 to 18 megabit per second down and about 8 up, which is the same thing we see on our Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket LTE phone on AT&T. Phone does have the mobile hotspot feature, so you can use this as a Wi-Fi hotspot and share the high-speed connection with devices. And when we're using that, we saw about 8 megabit per second down and 8 up using our Dell XPS 13 Ultrabook to service. Now that's a bit slower than we saw on the Skyrocket. Some of that can just be vagaries of the network at any given time, but we were seeing more like 15 down. So we're going to be continuing to do more tests on that to see if the speeds equalize. Of course, 8 megabit per second down and up is pretty darn fast enough, and it's certainly much faster than a shared Wi-Fi connection in some place like Starbucks. Anyway, back to our web browser. You can see it does a good job of rendering the site. Really nice, sharp, clear text. This is an 800 by 480 pixel display. That's the standard for Windows Phone. Again, there's a lot of things that are done here because they're defaults for the operating system, and some of those things will change. That's not going to do you any good now. I mean, if Windows Phone Tango comes out, say, by the end of the year and supports higher resolution displays, obviously the physical resolution of this display will never change. It's going to be 800 by 480. That said, Microsoft paid a lot of attention to typography in the OS, so the font quality is very high, and the display has great contrast, so I'm not really feeling unhappy with this at all. I would bet if you just handed this phone, say, and, oh, I don't know, the, the iPhone to somebody who really didn't know what the specs were of each, they might actually say they like this better because it's a bit larger and it has such nice contrast on it. But for those of you who are ultra picky and you can really see every little pixel with your awesome eyes, well, you might not like it so much. So as you can see, zooming speed is just lovely and fast. You can also tap to get it to format things to fit into column view. Just very nice overall. Much improvement from the first Windows 7 phones that we saw back in the fall of 2010. No surprise, here we have a Hotmail Live tile that's pre-configured because when you set up the phone, you're going to log in with your Windows Live or Hotmail email address and assign that to your account. And you can use that with Zune Marketplace as well if you wish to indulge in Zune Marketplace and the Zune Desktop app for Windows. If you want to sync movies, uh, TV shows, and music, you'll use Zoom Desktop for Windows, and on the Mac you're going to use Windows Phone 7 Connector, and that can sy sync your iTunes playlist for all non-DRM content, and it can handle updating the phone, and it will sync photos to iPhoto as well. If you're into subscription music services, Zoom actually has a very wide selection of music. For 10 bucks a month, you get all you can eat and stream, and you can stream it to the phone directly. You don't have to just download it to your computer first and transfer. You can actually stream straight to the phone, and you can use a web browser to do the same. But again, that's an optional service. If you want it, go for it. If not, hmm. For each email account you set up, you can have a live tile assigned to it, and it supports, no surprise, MS Exchange very well. It also does POP and IMAP, standard email clients, and it does Gmail really well. And it can sync calendar and contacts to Gmail as well as MS Exchange. Cloud syncing is what this is about. There's no USB syncing for your PIM stuff. That means no contacts, no calendar, no notes over USB. This is all done over the cloud. It also supports syncing to Windows Live services, too. And it has SkyDrive support. Xbox is a big part of this, Xbox Live. And you can see we've got a bunch of games pre-installed here. And what's nice about this is, well, you get a lot of high-quality games. Microsoft really worked hard to ensure that you had a nice selection of games. There is that Xbox Live integration. And also, any game that you're interested in, you can try it before you buy it. So in case you think, well, this game might really stink or it might not play as smoothly as I would hope for, 
you can actually get some good playing time in to see how it goes. Now you can see we've got Assassin's Creed downloaded and Dodon Pachi Maximum, however you say that, which is a pretty popular game right now, and a Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, and we'll check out Need for Speed. So here we've got the cut screen going in. Now, it's really amazing how nice the games look and how they're running so well on a single core 1.4 gigahertz CPU with Adreno 205 graphics. This stuff's just fine. And here we are in this accelerometer based driving game. You can hear the speaker's pretty loud. Our volume is set at about two thirds. Single speaker under my right hand right now. If you're gaming, you just might cover that speaker up. Ooh. Nice graphics, smooth gameplay. Call quality on the Lumia 900 is excellent, as we'd expect from a higher-end Nokia phone. Crystal clear audio on both incoming and outgoing voice plays nicely with a variety of Bluetooth headsets we tested and our car kit as well. The earpiece volume is louder than average. In fact, it was a little bit like a mini speakerphone. I had to hold it away from my ear, even at about oh, 6 out of 10 on the volume scale, which is particularly loud because I don't have like super-duper hearing or anything like that. Definitely a nice phone for voice calls, and also reception, again, for Nokia, as we would expect, is quite good. It's better than average. Holds on to an LTE signal very well, a little bit better than our Vivid and our Skyrocket, in fact, in that respect. So as a voice phone, definitely can recommend it. The rear 8 megapixel camera takes really nice shots. Again, as you'd expect from a higher-end Nokia phone, for those of you who remember the N-series phone with the great optics, very nice, great color saturation. That combined with display, they look a little bit better than life when you're looking at them on the screen. Very sharp and not over sharp and not artifacty. We'll take a look at a couple of the shots that we've taken right now. So you can see you can go to albums, date, search for people that you've created, or just go to your camera roll and we're going to look at some colorful pictures here of wares in the supermarket. So you can see there's a lot of detail there, a lot of color. And even if we zoom in, still very sharp and very clear. Nice colors too. Paper Dragon at the Chinese market. Again, lots of detail even as we zoom in. Very clear, great colors, but not artifacty and noisy either. Outdoor flower shots. You can see that exposes it well. We don't have a problem with things whiting out too much. Now the white rocks get a little bit whiter, but for a digital camera that's, that's quite good. And again, lots of detail here. You can see individual petals on the flowers. nice colors again. So overall a really good camera and here's something that's nice. Yellow flowers often tend to overexpose and this was taken in sunlight. You can see the yellow flower really is yellow. Nice looking. Now for your music and videos you've got the Zoom mobile client here. You can see music videos podcast has an FM radio as well. You do have to plug in a headset. Headset is not included in the box. Pretty much anyone will do except for an iPhone headset. I found that didn't make for a very good antenna. And you can hit up the marketplace to get more music. Here's what the music interface looks like. Again, it's pretty much a text-based listing, typography focused. And if we pick an album, we get information about it. Very visually appealing. And you can play in the background. And you can swipe songs just like that to change a song. And there you go, we've got our background playback, and we can control that with the volume keys and hit pause to stop it. Good stuff. Now for videos, anything we've shot with the camera shows up here. And by the way, this takes 720p video. Again, this is another limit, current limitation of Windows Phone 7.5 Mango. Hopefully with the big update coming uh, called Tango, 
will actually get the ability to shoot 1080p video because obviously this camera hardware, the rear camera, is capable of that as is HTC's Titan 2 that's coming out on April 8th as well and that one has a 16 megapixel camera. Kind of silly to be limited to 720p video then, isn't it? We've got a trailer loaded here of Mission Impossible and we'll check out and see how that plays. Now we put this on using the Zoom application under Windows and that automatically brings down the file size and makes the resolution match well for the display. Looks great. The phone has an 1830 milliamp lithium ion battery that's sealed inside. Obviously, it's a unibody housing. There's pretty much no obvious way that you're ever going to open this guy up to get at that battery. And Nokia claims seven hours of 3G talk time on that, 300 hours of standby, and I think about 60 hours of music playback with the screen off. And that pretty much matches what we've seen now that we've played 60 hours of music on this just yet. But in terms of Talk time and longevity, it makes it through the day on a charge. This is not a super frugal phone, however. Battery life is not gee whiz golly awesome. It's like all the other high-end smartphones currently on the market. It's got a big screen, it's got a fast CPU, and it likes to eat juice. So I found that with moderate use, that included using the web browser quite a bit, having a couple of email accounts turned on with push, playing about a half an hour of Xbox games, talking on the phone for 30 minutes, watching several YouTube videos, and listening to music with the screen out for 45 minutes, I made it till about 9 o'clock at night before I had to plug it in. Another thing to keep in mind that just like the iPhone, the storage that's built in is all the storage you got. So you got it's a 16 meg, sorry, 16 gig phone, and you've got almost 14 gigs of available storage, and there is no micro SD card to expand it like there commonly is on Android phones. Now. There could be, those of you who remember the original Samsung Focus, the first generation Windows phone, that actually had a user accessible micro SD card slot, but that ended up getting people into more trouble than it was worth. See, Windows Phone, the way it does things is it formats an SD card along with internal memory as one extended volume. Once you put that card in, you can't take it out, you're going to corrupt the phone's storage. So therefore, manufacturers decided to not give you the option of doing that and potentially messing up your phone. So. 16 gig phone is a 16 gig phone is a 16 gig phone. That's all there is here, folks. Not that that's bad. That's, you know, enough to store quite a few music, videos, and that kind of stuff on there, and a lot of applications, too. So that's the Nokia Lumia 900, $99 with contract on AT&T. Really nice phone, and I, I think you know that I like Windows Phone quite a bit, and it's evolving very well. We now have a good selection of applications on the market, but you're still looking at only 70,000 apps now. The argument could be, how many do you need? Pretty much everything that I want is on here. I've got my ebook reading application. I've got my Evernote, Pulse for news reading, all that kind of stuff. But there's always going to be a few things right now that are missing. For example, you get Kindle, but you don't get Barnes & Noble Nook for e-reading applications. My favorite grocery shopping list that's cross-platform, great for the whole family to use, Grocery IQ, not yet available on this phone. So that is something that you might have to live with. If you're into esoteric apps and even not so esoteric apps, you won't find quite everything you're going to find for Android and iOS right now. That said, Microsoft is aggressively courting developers and the application list is growing quickly and there really is enough here to keep most anybody informed, entertained, and pleasantly busy. The phone has great voice quality, uh, an elegant and unique design, doesn't look like the iPhone or Android phones or anything else, very durable design with Gorilla Glass and a polycarbonate housing, Excellent rear 8 megapixel camera, front video chat camera that works nicely with the Skype beta. We tested that out. Got GPS for Bing Maps, AT&T Navigator, sorry, no Google Maps here. And the usual Bluetooth with A2B stereo and Wi-Fi. So all around, it's a well-rounded phone. It's a very nice high-end phone. And if you've tried out Android and you find it a little bit too confusing or... Uh, open, you're not into all those widgets, all that kind of stuff, you just want a phone that kind of has a streamlined UI and very straightforward and easy to use, much like iOS is, this is it. And it's a little bit more customizable than iOS too. Obviously you can change your live tiles and get whatever notifications you want from that kind of thing up on your home screen. Definitely a phone I'd recommend if you're willing to try out a new phone platform. And for those of you who are already into Windows Phone, definitely, definitely a phone to get. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review of the Nokia Lumia 900, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.